I've discussed many lavish travelers on my channel, but none can come even close to what the US president spends when going to another place. The president's planes, cars, and other modes of transportation are not made out of gold, at least until Trump is out of office, and the furnishing inside is by no means extravagant or outrageously luxurious. Yet despite that, US taxpayers spent one astoundingly high price for each flight that would make any Arabian prince or sheik look like a dirt poor beggar starving on the streets of Riyadh. The Motorcade Having two presidents killed on the road is not a great score for US Secret Services. So, ever since JF Kennedy was shot while cruising around in the presidential limousine, the NSA got a bit more strict on the whole presidential transportation gig. So today, the president going from one place to another is a logistical nightmare that, although precise like a well-oiled machine, cost a top dollar for the taxpayers. The motorcade is the single most impressive exhibition of this security masterpiece, and it's the only thing that's actually on display when the president is traveling. The rest of the operations are usually behind the scenes, and although crucial, they remain hidden from the public eye. The motorcade is truly a sight to be seen. With over 50 vehicles and 100 personnel, it's the world's second most tightly secured means of transportation. Well, Joe Biden can't actually build a street from his private property to the Oval Office, so Putin's route to work is a bit less dangerous. Yet the whole sophistication of this convoy that always follows the US president wherever he goes is unmatched. This convoy is so instrumental in keeping the man in charge alive that the whole thing follows everywhere the US president is going. Be it Dallas, California, or even abroad, naturally there is a small obstacle between the USA and almost every other country in the world called the ocean, which is not particularly well known for being car friendly. So the NSA does the next best thing. They fly the entire motorcade, all 50 vehicles, to wherever the president goes. So other nations can also witness this display of power. It's much like the circus is coming to town, but much more intimidating. And instead of clowns and acrobats, there are snipers and armed guards that could kill you instantly. Now that's a neat trick I'd rather not see in person. Naturally, this is not as easy as it sounds. The Secret Services use a Boeing C-17 Globemaster cargo plane. The flying behemoth costs around $340 million without the added defense systems. Since the president is flying on another aircraft, Air Force One, the Globemaster is actually nothing special when it comes to comfort. It's a strict cargo plane, carrying the most spectacular parade anyone can see. Of course, this escalates the price of each presidential flight drastically. And if you're one with heart problems, you should probably skip the next few minutes while I discuss how much it costs the presidential convoy to get around the world. How much do we pay for the president's journeys? As I already mentioned, the president is traveling on a separate plane. Usually, he travels with a highly modified Boeing VC-25A. It's the military equivalent of a Boeing 747. The commander-in-chief actually has two of them ready for use. As each one costs over $325 million for the floor model. Naturally, the President's One is equipped with top of the line furnishing, comfortable business class leather seating, and most importantly, state of the art defense capabilities, which drive the price to anywhere between $600 and $800 million. Of course, the defense characteristics of the plane are kept secret, so the exact price is unknown. While Donald Trump was in the Oval Office, the Secret Services went ahead and ordered two new Boeing 7478 aircraft, each one with specific modifications and lavish, luxurious settings, which would cost the American taxpayers at least $4 billion. Along with all the planes, vehicles, and escort the President gets during his travels, one can easily conclude that this would hardly be a cheap trip. Nonetheless, with a price of $200 million per flight, even the Sultan of Brunei, who once paid $20,000 for a haircut, would consider this a bit stiff. On average, the administration pays $2,614 for each minute the president is on the road, flying, or anywhere outside the Oval Office. That's what I call losing money when not at the office. Hopefully, cigarette breaks and dementia episodes are not included as travel expenses.
The Motorcade Formation The motorcade is actually a rigorous and well-planned defensive strategy where every single vehicle and personnel has an exact spot. Front and center is always a lead car, or in some cases a motorcycle. However, that's not the first car that secures the perimeter when the president moves. A patrol car called the route car goes about five minutes before the motorcade to ensure the route is safe from large-scale attacks. Any large-scale attack would need a far bigger window of opportunity to prepare for action. This way, any organized traps are prevented in advance. After the route car, about 20 to 30 motorcycles have the single task of clearing all other vehicles from the President's route. They block entry points to the road in use and push aside the traffic ahead so the President may continue unobstructed. This first wave of cops that would block an entire street for the President are not actually from the Secret Service, but from the local police departments. After the pilot car, there are two additional cars that can substitute the pilot if needed. Several other critical vehicles at the back ensure the President is as safe as a marshmallow-covered playground. The ID car is the playmaker in the motorcade, as it's the car that communicates with outside surveillance teams. A little behind is the Hazardous Materials Mitigation Unit, a truck full of equipment and people who can detect and respond to chemical, biological or nuclear attacks on the motorcade. Next is the Roadrunner, which is essentially a moving communication center that gives the motorcade access to satellites, the internet and other connections. Finally, there is an ambulance, a support car and way at the back, three to four patrol cars, who are tasked with keeping speedsters from recently opened crossroads to stay behind the motorcade. At the core of the motorcade, right behind the pilot cars, is the most essential part of the motorcade, the secure package. This is where the president is. The secure package is an autonomous group of cars that can detach from the motorcade if needed and escort the president outside of harm's way. It's led by the US Secret Service Electronic Countermeasure Suburban. Its primary function is to jam all incoming radio signals, rendering any remote activated explosive inoperable. The secure package is also the control car, which carries all essential personnel like advisors and a doctor. The rest of the core pack of the motorcade is the halfback, filled with the Commander-in-Chief's personal detail, and the cat car carrying the counter-assault team. Needless to say, the most important vehicle there is the President's limo. However, there are two similar Cadillacs, one of which is a decoy. They constantly switch places, so no one would know which one is the President's car. They have identical details and even number plates, so even if someone spots the one in which the President is, it will be impossible to relay this information to their accomplices. However, diversion is not the only tactic for preventing attacks. The limo is nicknamed The Beast for a reason. The Beast. The Beast is essentially a moving bunker. It's one of the safest places in the world, and along with all other security measures, the luxurious limo has some James Bond-style defensive capabilities. Despite being a lightweight tank weighing between 15,000 and 20,000 pounds, the Beast is incredibly comfy and has a highly luxurious setting. Nicknamed Cadillac One, this GM model is not an ordinary car you can just buy from any old dealership. Well, you may try to get a duplicate if you have $1.5 million to spend. The heavily armored 8-inch thick plating and the enforced floor pallets couldn't be installed on a regular car suspension, so GM had to use a modified truck frame for this limo. This makes the car entirely bulletproof, as the windows themselves are 5-inch thick and can deflect a 44 caliber Magnum bullet. All windows of the limousine are sealed, and the only one that could be opened is the driver's. This becomes useful in cases of chemical attacks when the president's compartment gets entirely sealed. To make it even more imposing, the beast is a whole arsenal on its own. It has a rocket launcher, night vision goggles, a tear gas cannon, shotguns, bottled oxygen, and blood. Not because the president is a vampire. 
although right now he generally looks like one. But because in case of a severe wound, the onboard staff needs to have at least two banks of the President's blood type. Being one massive chunk of armored metal, almost all noises are sealed out of the car. The only contact comes from the mobile communication center and several microphones spread outside that allowed the security detail inside the limo to have their ears unplugged in case of an attack. Despite being a moving fortress, Cadillac One is also one of the most luxurious limousines in the world. Well, it's not a party limousine, so don't expect a lavish bar and party lights inside. Instead, it's a moving oval office, a place where the president and his guests can discuss politics, deals, and gossip about their colleagues from around the world. At least, that's what I imagine politicians do when talking eye to eye. While Donald Trump first used the latest edition of the beast, it was commissioned by his predecessor, Barack Obama. So there are no golden cup holders, no diamond seat buckles, and no eccentric, egomaniacal Trump signs on the side of the car. Are you impressed? You should be. After all, it is you who is paying $2,614 a minute for the comfort and security of the president. Still, do you think the next beast can be downsized a bit? Let me know in the comments below. If you think the Secret Service are pampering Biden way too much, just look at how much the five most protected world leaders spend to keep themselves safe.